During the days of Britpop, the most important music awards show of the year was the Brit Awards. The year was 1996 and that year's Brit Awards were dominated by two different elements of the Britpop scene. The first was Oasis, who swept the board, winning the award for Best British Album of the Year with What's the Story Morning Glory, Best British Video of the Year for Wonderwall and Best British Group. The second noteworthy event, however, occurred during a performance of the song Earth Song by Michael Jackson. Here's a clip of Michael Jackson during that performance, dressed as Jesus, surrounded by adoring children. Michael Jackson was dressed all in white. He was surrounded by children and people in rags who were kneeling at his feet, kissing him on the head, while he stood there in the crucifix position. And just to add some context to this, this was 1996, and for the past three years since 1993, child abuse allegations had been made against Michael Jackson. So I think you'll agree with me, that footage has not aged very well. However, it didn't go down so great at the time either. Especially not with the frontman of the then ascendant Pulp, a Yorkshire man by the name of Jarvis Cocker. To explain what happened next, I'd like to read you a short excerpt from an article in The Guardian. Pulp were sitting at one of three tables commandeered by their label, Island, and as the evening wore on, there was a growing concern that this was a Michael Jackson event masquerading as an awards show. As it was happening live, Jarvis got increasingly frustrated and irritable at the table. It was just bad because it was like, it was there with all these people with rags around him and then they all kind mm. of came up and touched him at the end and it was like they were properly healed and, mm. and it was just stupid, especially like he had a rabbi there because mm. obviously he'd been told off because he'd have, um, apparently made some anti-Semitic anti anti mm. uh, comments so, you know, so he obviously thought, oh well I'll get a rabbi into my dance act and then that'll <laughs> shut all the Jewish people up and they won't mm. complain anymore and then the final part was him going down the tunnel with four kids, which after the allegations that had been made against him, I thought that was in a bit of poor taste. Mm. It, and it was the way that he hijacked the whole event as well. The whole of the Brit Awards was kind of devoted to Michael Jackson, basically. Mm -hmm. I was just sat there, you know, and watching it and feeling a bit ill because he's there doing his Jesus act. And um, I could kind of see, I, it seemed to me that there was quite a lot of other people who found it quite distasteful as well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I just thought, you know, stage is there, I'm here. You could actually do something about it and say, this is a load of rubbish if you want to. And then Pulp keyboard player Candida Doyle gave him the push he needed. Jarvis, Tricky and Mushroom from Massive Attack got up and tried to get on stage. Only Jarvis made it though, Tricky and Mushroom were stopped by security. The whole island table were there, cheering Jarvis on, but their celebrations didn't last very long. At the musical event of the week, when pop singer Jarvis Cocker invaded the stage during Michael Jackson's performance at the Brit Awards. You can see Jarvis in the circle here. Jackson says he's sickened, saddened, shocked, cheated and angry. Jarvis ran on stage, stuck his bum out, did a little farting gesture, and then ran off. However, he was immediately apprehended by a group of Michael Jackson's security men. I just got up and just bombed it, because I knew I'd have to move fast, because if anybody cottoned on to what was happening, they'd, 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 I wouldn't get on. And I, I was just quite surprised, suddenly I was there, and as you could probably see on that bit of film, once I was there, I kind of didn't really know what to do then, so <laughs> well, I, I may as well bend over and show me bum, so. <laughs> At this point, someone called Bob Mortimer comes into the story. Now, for those of you outside the UK who haven't heard of Reeves and Mortimer, they are a very popular comedy duo who were at their absolute peak in the 90s. Both Reeves and Mortimer were there, but as it happened, Bob Mortimer was a trained solicitor. So Bob Mortimer went backstage and saw Jarvis surrounded by all these security guys. He threw them all out and basically sat down with Jarvis and tried to find out what was going on. 
Bob was there, and you used to be. You were a barrister, weren't you? I was a solicitor. At a the solicitor. Time, yeah. And didn't you go down to. Because they arrested, or they. Certainly the police took uh, Jarvis away. <laughs> no, Michael Jackson's goons arrested him, not the police. And they put him in a porter cabin. I presumed it would be something, you know, like substances, weaponry, <laughs> something like that. And I, and I cleared them out, demanded to go in there, and I said, Jarvis, what have you done? And he said, I showed me bottom to. <laughs> So, so then, then you went to the police station and they held you till three o'clock in the morning. Now, is the story that I've heard about Bob Mortimer, is it a true story? And if it is, can you tell us what happened? Bob used to work for Peckham Council, so, uh, and he, in the legal department, so he offered to kind of, uh, you know, speak in my defence and deal with the kind of legal aspects of the case. As far as I knew, all policemen kept asking him for his autograph to so <laughs> concentrate on his job. Michael Jackson's security forces had alleged that Jarvis had run on stage and assaulted several of the child performers. It wasn't long before the police showed up and Jarvis, along with two of the island guys and Bob Mortimer, was taken to Kensington Police Station. Once there, Jarvis was questioned for two hours while Vic Reeves stood outside the station holding up a piece of paper saying, free the Jarvis one. Can you tell us what happened backstage afterwards? Yeah, well, that's the bit of it that's that's the kind of horrible bit for me because then they arrested me and said, oh, you know, you ran onto, us, onto that stage and, and assaulted some kids. I couldn't, I, I couldn't really believe that they were saying that at first. Um, but then, you know, they carted me off to the police station, so it wasn't so much of a joke then. Meanwhile, back at the Brits, a man named Gary Farrow, who was the head of press relations for Sony, the record company to whom Michael Jackson was signed, had gone into overdrive, getting all of the major British tabloids on side and telling them a totally false, heavily embroidered story which included the allegations that Jarvis had run on stage and assaulted several children. And because it wasn't shown on TV that night, the first anyone in the general public heard about the night's events was in the news. All of which had been heavily influenced and skewed by Sony Music's head of press relations who didn't want his artist and his label to take any blame. From the Brit Awards, the arguments are still raging. Did Pulp's lead singer Jarvis Cocker attack children appearing on stage with Michael Jackson? He insists he didn't, but one performer suggested he did at least tread on her foot. Cocker was arrested and held for several hours in police cells, accused of punching a boy. This evening he strongly denied that and said of Jackson in a statement, the music industry allows him to indulge his fantasies because of his wealth and power. People go along with it even though they know it's a bit sick. I just couldn't go along with it anymore. Completely blown away by the national reaction and the, at that time, inexplicable hostility of the press, Jarvis Cocker went to ground. However, two very important people came out in support of him. The first did so secretly, and his name was David Bowie. David Bowie was there at the Brits to receive an Outstanding Contribution Award, which was, interestingly, presented to him by Tony Blair. And as chance would have it, David Bowie had brought along his own camera crew, and they had captured the whole event in close-up, not as a distant, almost CCTV quality image, but right up close. And David Bowie released the footage. The whole nation saw that Jarvis hadn't done anything wrong, and the tide of opinion began, slowly, to turn in his favour. Now the second major player to come out in Jarvis's favour was Chris Evans. If there was one band who really personified the UK in the 90s, that was of course Oasis. But if there was one TV show, I would say that was TFI Friday and its host, Chris Evans. Chris Evans was one of the pillars of 90s rock and roll culture in the UK and he came out very, very forcefully in favour of Jarvis Cocker. But now it's time for Jarvis. Yeah. Monday night was the night that Jarvis invaded Michael Jackson's stage and this has been the week when the whole of the tabloid press turned against poor little Jarvis. He's off his cocker, said the son. The night our young dreams were pulped, said the male. Jacko's pulp friction, said the Daily Express. Uh, that's what the press thought, and here's what Michael Jackson said about the situation. I'm sickened, saddened, shocked, upset, and cheated, and angry. 
<laughs> about the whole situation. Well, uh, what did he do? What was all the fuss about? Well, you didn't see it on the Brits on, when it was broadcast on Tuesday, but then again, they cut most of the best bits out anyway. This is actually what happened. This is really a camera right at the front of the stage. This is what Jarvis did. Yeah. Here he is. This is actual footage from the front row. And now, and now, what's, what? Now watch this. <laughs> That's one of Jackson's dancers. <laughs> Jarvis goes to all of them. Okay, are we ready to give him a bit of support? Yeah! Live from Manchester, Jarvis Cocker. <laughs> Soon after, other national publications and newspapers began to change their tune and to back Jarvis as it became clear they had been tricked. In light of the new footage that David Bowie had secretly released, the NME, the Mirror and several other publications began releasing Jarvis is Innocent t-shirts. The next thing to happen was it was actually discovered that it had been a member of Michael Jackson's own security entourage that had assaulted the children on stage. There it is. Well, right. This well. is like a high eight footage that we got sent to us, and apparently the highlighted area is you. That is me, yes. <laughs> and the maiming and brutalization of children was... Well, this is what this rubbish was, because this is the only bit of footage that they released to the TV at the time, mm -hmm. so you can't really see what's going on at all. That's, that's one of these dancers deciding to try and do some ninja on me. <laughs> Yeah, if you watch, this guy runs over and knocks some children over. Jarvis runs over. Oh, was that like a bouncer who was... Yeah, yeah he's he running was supposed to be like a dancer with a child over But suddenly he decided that he was Bruce Lee. <laughs> now, it's really hard to overstate the power and influence of those two major players I mentioned already in the 90s culture in the UK, that being Oasis and Chris Evans. So, when this conversation took place on... TFI Friday between Evans and Noel Gallagher, it was the final nail in the coffin for the Jackson camp. Okay. Were well, you aware that, uh, that the organiser of the Brits condemned uh, Jarvis for what he did during the Jackson number? Jarvis Cocker, I must say this, Jarvis Cocker is a star and he should be given an MBE. Yeah! yeah. Because, because, because for Michael Jackson to come over to this country after what's all gone on, and I think we all know what we're talking about here, the dress <laughs> in a white robe, right, thinking he's the, he's the Messiah. I mean, I mean, who does he think he is? Me? Right? That <laughs> <laughs> is out of order. Jarvis came through in the end as something of a national hero. Brian Eno called you um, the voice of the people. Did they? It's nice of them. Do you think that's accurate? I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, in fact, I think that once pop stars start to think that they're the voice of the people or, the, or something like that, then they've got severe problems. Mm. Yeah, you're sort of being touted on one hand as, like, the working class hero. Well, yeah, I know, because you can't, you can never know what's going on in other people's heads and stuff, and it's a bit, it's a bit uh, arrogant to imagine that you know what the people think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why that's Michael a... Jackson got in trouble, because <laughs> he, like, he thought he was the voice of the people, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he was saying, I can heal and let's cut the vein for it. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, he was detached from the people. But uh, Jarvis has, having fully cooperated with the police, who I have to say have treated him very courteously, have decided, having considered all the allegations, there is no evidence whatsoever to justify criminal proceedings against him. He's obviously uh, relieved. It's a pity that it's taken so long for this decision to be arrived at. Uh, but it has been arrived at, undeniably. Jarvis. Jarvis, what's your reaction to the fact that you're not being charged? Well, I'm just happy because the thing, it's not very nice uh, to have allegations that, you know, that you would go and assault children, go and punch children or whatever. Um, I know that not everybody believes what they're reading newspapers, but some people do. And it's not very nice to think that as you're going about your daily business, people think you're the kind of person you jump on a stage and hit children. And so I'm glad that I've been cleared of those allegations. How upset were you by those allegations? I was very upset. I mean, I think anybody would be. You see, I suppose there are some worse things, but it's one of the worst things you can be accused of, it doesn't really. Not exactly 
certainly party CV, is it? <laughs> <laughs> he is still well remembered for being the only person in the whole of the British music record industry at that time who was willing to take a stand against a multi-millionaire American standing on stage telling the whole country that he was their messiah. Jarvis didn't come through entirely unscathed, however. Having spent a short while being in the absolute epicentre of a British tabloid frenzy, having been accused of assaulting children, having been questioned by police for hours, he was heavily rattled by the whole thing. And afterwards, it's always seemed to me that he kind of made the decision that that lifestyle wasn't really for him anymore. Pulp's next release, This Is Hardcore, was nowhere near as commercially accessible as their enormously successful Different Class album had been. And from that point onwards, Jarvis seemed to make the choice to gently move away from the limelight and gradually get back into some sense of normal life. As a young lad myself at the time, growing up through the Britpop heyday, after the events of the 1996 Brit Awards, I never had any time for Michael Jackson ever again. It also seems that Jarvis quite rightly looks back on his protests and everything that he did then with no regrets. I want to get to this question from Simon Brammel just before we close for very obvious reasons. Simon Brammel. Do the panel agree that media coverage of Michael Jackson's death has been over the top? And of course, I want to hear what Jarvis Cocker has to say about this. <laughs> Well, yes, it's, um, I, I, I've experienced this because, because I'm linked to him in this, for a certain incident in the dim and distant past. What did you object about in 96, 1996? What was it you disliked about Jackson then? Um, he was pretending to be Jesus. I mean, I'm not religious, but I think uh, as a performer myself, the idea of someone um, pretending to have the, the, I don't know if you saw the performance, but the power of healing is just not right. You know, rock stars have got big enough egos without trying to be Jesus, <coughs> you know. So that was what got my goat, but that was that one particular thing. Otherwise, as a performer, you thought he was a genius? Yeah, he invented the moonwalk. <laughs> And Bob Mortimer seemingly never forgot those events either. And so I would like to leave you with Vic and Bob's hilarious piss take version of Michael Jackson's Earth Song released after the events of February 1996. Okay, and you, can you tell us about the CD you're working on, please? CD? You're working on the CD game. You tell me everything. Oh, sorry, yeah. You tell me everything in the bar. When yeah. we're and then you forget it all. Well, what do you expect? Oh, sorry. Where's his beer? Exactly. No, the CD. CD. No, there's a there's a, a game out of shooting stars on Christmas, and it's all on uh, CD, compact disc. Michael Jackson with the Earth Song and bringing us straight back down to Earth, here's Vic with a correct rendition. <laughs> Thank you.